Hey, have you heard any good books lately? This is Talking Audiobooks, your weekly podcast for all news, discussion, and opinions surrounding the wonderful world of audiobooks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Wherever you are, whenever you may be listening, this is Talking Audiobooks, season number two, episode number two. And I am your host, the man with the face made for radio and the voice made for print, Casey Trowbridge. And I am so happy to be with you as host. Uh, I can't believe this is something that is actually happening and that I'm involved. I want to say that... After recording the podcast you heard last week with Ken, I was in my bedroom later that evening, lying in bed, listening to silence, and that's unusual for me. I don't really like silence. I'm more of a gotta-have-noise-in-the-background kind of a person, but for whatever reason, the silence was deafening, and I'm lying in bed, and I'm thinking... You know, you have an idea for what you want to do the first week. You pretty much know what you want to do the second week. And maybe you have something that you think will work in the third week. But what are you going to be talking about in week 12? What are you going to be talking about in week 52? And the truth is that I have absolutely no idea how to answer either of those two questions. And in a way, that fills me with a lot of anxiety And in another way, it fills me with a lot of excitement to see where this podcast can go from here. And which way wins out sort of depends on the day, the time, the mood. But regardless, I am very excited to be here and to assume the mantle of command as host of the Talking Audiobooks podcast. this show as for today's episode uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've got in store for the future i'll say that this one might be a little bit longer than some of the other ones that are coming up just because i have a few things to announce a few things to share but this one is going to be uh, i think something that you're going to like i have a fan feedback question that i'm going to pose in a couple of segments And it's going to be designed to get a discussion going. What I want the show to be really is like a community. I want to get a lot of feedback going, a lot of conversations. I have some ideas on how to do that, and we're going to talk about that here in a bit. But uh, I won't have to worry too much about what we're talking about in 12 weeks if we've got an active group of listeners who are engaged and pitching ideas. This is going to be a very user-centric show. You're going to tell me the things you like. You're going to tell me the things you don't like. You're going to ask questions, hopefully. You're going to uh, tell me what you're listening to. I'm going to talk a lot on this show about the things that I'm listening to, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to hear about what you're listening to. In fact, I want to hear more about that than pretty much anything at all, especially if you're loving what you're listening to. I want to hear if you've just discovered a new narrator that has just really improved a story for you or just something that you really liked or made a new discovery of a new series or a new author or whatever it might be, I want to hear about that because that's what we're here for. I think that reading in general, and this is true of audiobooks as well, I know there's groups of people that don't think it's reading if you're listening to a book. I disagree. I said so in the third episode of Uh, what we're now calling season one of Talking Audiobooks. But I think one of the great things about reading is that it really does give you a chance to get out of your comfort zone and to try new things. And so I want to hear about those things where you finally broke down and you tried a new author that someone recommended or, hey, maybe you heard me talk about something on this show and you're like, you know what? I wouldn't have normally given that a try. I wouldn't have normally picked up that book, but hearing about it on the show, he's got me interested. I'm going to check it out, and I ended up liking liking it. That's what I want to hear. And so, you know, like I said, I want this to be a very fan-friendly experience. 
user-driven show. You can help set the content and shape things. And as I said, we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. Hey, audio fans, this is producer Ken inviting you to join Jess and Tina's super fun audiobook challenge. Jess from the audiobookworm.com and Tina from as told by Tina.net have put their heads together and come up with a unique way to celebrate the fact that June is audiobook month. The object is to get three in a row or fill out all nine squares on your audio bingo card. A printable version of the card can be found at the audiobookworm.com. The nine spaces to fill in are as follows. One, listen to an audiobook narrated by the author. Two, listen to an audiobook recommended by a friend. Three, listen to an audiobook that has been on your TBR or to be read list. I guess this should be TBL for to be listened list. Anyway, listen to an audiobook that's been on your list for more than a year. Number four, listen to an audiobook that was released within the last month. Number five, free space. Number six, listen to an audiobook that was released during your birth month. Number seven, listen to an audiobook with a narrator that has the same first initial as you. Number eight, listen to an audiobook narrated by a famous actor. Number nine, re listen to your favorite audiobook. The officially recognized hashtag for this event is hashtag audiobingo. This is a challenge after all, so why not spark a competition among your friends and family? It's a great way to get them to listen to audiobooks, maybe even for the first time. It's also a good opportunity to get to know your fellow listeners via social media. The Talking Audiobooks podcast's very own Casey Trowbridge is participating, and he'll be discussing his progress in future episodes. The challenge is going to be active for the entire month of June, so start listening and have fun! I want to make mention of one other thing right away, which is that if you are subscribed to this show in iTunes or in another podcast uh, aggregate type of software or website, um, on Tuesday, June 6th, a, a uh, episode will drop into the feed. <laughs> Actually, producer Ken already pushed the button in that episode that uh, Casey's talking about. That book commentary is already in the feed. I was just so excited to get it out there that I, uh, I pushed the button early. I'm sorry. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. And it's going to be the first of what I'm calling book commentaries. Uh, I decided to call them commentaries instead of reviews just to be a little bit different. And because as in the case of the first book that I will be commenting on, I talk a little bit about the history of the character that uh, is featured in the novel. I won't spoil it, but I, I went into sort of the history that surrounds the book, which doesn't really have much to do with the book itself. It's just extra background stuff. And that's not usually the type of thing people feature in a book review. They just talk about the story itself. So I decided to call it a book commentary just to be different, but that will drop into the feed on Tuesday. And all of those are going to be separated. All the book commentaries are not going to be part of the main episode. That way, if you're really not interested, you don't have to listen. You can just move on to the next thing in your feed. I promise I won't be offended. I'd like you to listen to as many of them as you can. Just, you know, try new things or expose yourself to what's out there that you might not be missing or something that you're aware of but you've never given a chance to before that's why i would like you to listen to the book commentaries but i understand that you know you got a lot of podcasts in your feed maybe and a lot of episodes crying for your attention and you've got other things to do you got audiobooks to listen to maybe you even are fortunate enough to have a social life and a family and friends and you know other obligations so you may have to pick and choose and that's fine that's why we're keeping them separate so that you can decide what you're interested in listening to and you can move on from what you're not interested in and that's uh, gonna be how that works so what I'm going to do now is 
going to take a little break and you're going to hear about the PDQ release of the week. The PDQ release of the week is important because this is one of those things that if this weren't here, there probably wouldn't be a show. And so that's why I'm going to encourage you to check out uh, the titles featured every week that are picked and uh, narrated, not narrated, but the, the spot that you're going to hear in just a few seconds is narrated by Ken, and he'll tell you about this week's release, and he'll tell you about every release going forward in these little spots. And, you know, I would encourage you, if it sounds interesting, to go ahead and pick up these titles because that really helps keep Ken in particular going to produce the show and and uh, you know it makes us happy and we like to be happy and after that we're going to get into our fan feedback question for this week but right now I want to take you to the PDQ release of the week. Thanks Casey. Hey you know it doesn't take a detective to figure out that even dads like audiobooks. That's right. Dads listen to audiobooks all the time, various places, in the car usually. That's where I listen. And I'm a dad, so I guess that counts. I'm speaking in first person experience. So it seems only fitting that since uh, Father's Day is in June and we usually can't think of anything fun to get our dads anymore. Ties, who wears a tie anymore? I don't know. But what about getting dad an audiobook? Did you know that you can get dad an audiobook on audible.com and get a download code that you can just write inside of his Father's Day card and say, here, use this code, go to audible.com and download this book. And dang it, happy Father's Day. So since we know that dads love detective books, right? What dad doesn't like a good detective story? Why not give him one of the best detective series ever done? And I'll let this music give you a hint as to what that is. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yep, it's Dragnet. Take a listen to this short excerpt from Season 1. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. A night watchman has been stabbed to death in a downtown appliance store. There's no apparent motive for the killing. No lead to the suspect. Your job, find him. documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, August 8th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Warman. My name's Friday. We were on the way out from the office, and it was 8.26 a.m. when we got to the corner of 7th and Ducumman Streets. Bentley Appliance Company. Sure, a big place, huh? Yeah. There's somebody coming. Mm hmm Yeah, what do you want? Police officers. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Come on in. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I guess it'd be a good idea if I locked the door again, huh? If you'd like to, yes, sir. Good idea. There, now, it's all secure. Uh, my name's Ralph Bentley. I'm the one who put in the call. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How you do? How you do, sir? Where's the body? Oh, back here in the stock room. Who found him, Mr. Bentley? Our building superintendent, Curtis Allman. Is he here now? Yeah, he's upstairs. All right. I suppose you'll want to talk to him. Yes, we will. I'll get it. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, over here. It's behind these packing cases. Uh-huh. We well, can see there he was stabbed. Yeah. Well, it's sure a mess, isn't it? Yeah. What's his name? Mr. Bentley? Hmm? The victim's name? Oh, uh, uh Clyde Maddock. M-A-T-I-C-K? Uh, I-K, no C. Mm -hmm. What time was the body discovered? 
It must have been about 7.30. That's when Holman comes to work. Did he find it right away? Well, I don't know. I haven't been able to get him to say much. When I came in, he was just standing here looking at the body. He was kind of numb, you know. Mm -hmm. What time did you get here? Must have been about 7.45. That's when I called you, wasn't it? Yes, sir, about that time. Yeah, that's when it was, at uh, 7.45. How long has this Matic worked for you? Oh, three years. Uh, almost four. Mm. Has anything in here been disturbed? Not that I know of. I don't think Holman touched anything. I couldn't talk to him very much, but I'm pretty sure he knows enough to leave things alone. Uh -huh. Well, I sure can't understand it. What's that? Well, take a look around. It doesn't look like there's a fight. Does it look like it to you? No. Well, that's it. What do you mean? Well, it stands to reason it was somebody he knew, or some stranger, there'd be signs. He wouldn't just let somebody come up and stab him in the back, now, would he? Doesn't seem likely, does it? Well, in the three years he's been with us, I've never heard anyone say an unkind thing about Maddox. Not one. Man didn't have an enemy in the world. Well, that doesn't mean much. Hmm? One of his friends didn't like him then. a.m. We put in a call to the crime lab and asked them to come out and go over the scene. The manager led us upstairs to the main offices and we met the building superintendent, Curtis Hallman. He was a small man in his early 50s. I don't care how it looks, Mr. Friday. I didn't do it. You got to believe that. I didn't have anything to do with it. I know what he says. You may not know, but Dragnet started out as a radio show in the 1950s starring Jack Webb and then moved over to television where it became a giant hit and its opening line of the story you're about to hear is true became part of the culture. PDQ Audiobooks has collected the first 39 episodes of the Dragnet Radio Show in Volume 1, 39 half-hour commercial-free episodes available exclusively on audible.com. Check the show notes for this episode. There's a link to that title on audible.com, and I guarantee you, Dad's going to love it for Father's Day. And we're back, and that PDQ title right there is one that you might want to consider picking up for Dad for Father's Day. It's now time for what I call our fan feedback question which is a segment designed to get you, the listeners, involved in the show by asking you a question, asking you to share your experiences. And I thought this week, since this is my first time hosting the show, that I would focus the question on first times. And as I was preparing for this, I went back through my own Audible order history. And I was surprised because I was sure that a certain book was my first Audible purchase because it's the one that I most vividly remember listening to in those early days. It was called Disney War by James B. Stewart, narrated by Patrick Lawler, and it was over 25 hours long. And I was sure that that was the first one that I got on Audible. And my first Audible purchase was actually made on May 20th of 2006. So we're really close to um, that anniversary. In fact, the interview that I recorded with Ken that you heard last week was taped on May 19th. So almost 11 years to the day of my first Audible purchase. Well, as is occasionally the case sometimes you are so sure of something and so sure that your memory is not failing you that you become convinced of a different reality and then something happens to remind you of what the real reality looks like and that it doesn't care about your sentimentality i remember disney wars being the first memorable book i listened to on audible but it was actually the eighth book I purchased on June 3rd, 2006, is when I bought that book. Um, the first purchases that I made on Audible were the long Sherlock Holmes novels, uh, The Sign of the Four, uh, A Study in Scarlet, Hound of the Baskervilles, and The Valley of Fear. And after looking at that and seeing that, then memories started to flood back to me of 
burning them onto CDs and things like that. And back in the day when I thought I might actually want to listen to these audiobooks on my stereo, um, you know, which I occasionally did, but it just became easier to listen on my computer. Plus, my computer has a nice set of speakers, so it's fine to do it that way. Burning them to CD was more of a hassle. I could have just bought the CDs. But those were my first Audible purchases. I don't really remember the first audiobook I ever listened to because I was so young. If you haven't heard me before, um, I was born with a visual impairment. And so I grew up reading Braille. And Braille is great for certain things, but it can be cumbersome and bulky. And I don't really like to read books in Braille. I'd rather listen. I was always an auditory learner anyway. In fact, um, my great aunt Dorothy just passed away back on April 5th of this year. And after she passed away, I was, of course, thinking of memories of her and, and trying to think of the highlights, you know, and I remember, and I can't confirm this because I don't know who would know in my family if this happened the way I remember it or not, and as I've already said in this segment, the memories that we have sometimes play tricks on us, but I have a memory of coming home from a family gathering uh, where we saw Dorothy and being a child and I have a memory of her giving me a tape that she had recorded herself and it was her reading the book Heidi into a tape recorder and I think it was her way of trying to get me to listen to books and um even if that didn't happen, this one I know did. Her sister, my great aunt Kathleen, who was a nun, she uh, heard from me once when I was in probably fourth grade that I was interested in learning how to play the guitar. And since she was a guitar player, uh, she was very interested in teaching me if I was willing to learn. And so one day she showed up at my school, which required her to do some traveling. But I think she had uh, other reasons to be in the area. But she came to see me at school and she brought me a guitar that she had, a, a spare guitar, you know, uh, acoustic and probably old. But she brought it to me and she gave it to me and she handed me a, a tape and she said this is a instruction book that I taped and she played she read the book and played all the samples into a tape and so that was my audiobook trying to teach me how to play guitar was my great aunt Kathleen uh, recording a how to play guitar manual into a tape recorder. Now, uh, neither of those two things really took because I didn't become much of a reader. And I found out that I have virtually no talent for music. Uh, as a friend of mine said once, I can play the stereo. That's the instrument that I play the best. But, you know, it's interesting that they would have tried that. Like I said, I didn't really become a reader until later in life. Again, you know, I listened to audiobooks when I was younger. I have a memory of listening to one when I was maybe in first or second grade. They used to send them to me from the state library on these four track tapes. And you had a big bulky tape player that you could play them on and you could adjust the reading speed and could speed it up so that they all the narrator sounded like chipmunks or you could slow it down so he took forever 
Um, I think one of the earliest ones I remember was a book called Aldo Applesauce. Um, I would probably have to Google it and go back and see what that was about, but I do remember listening to that one as a child for some weird reason. And in school when I was younger, I had someone who was essentially what we would call a braille transcriber. I would braille my homework and she would uh, translate it into print and turn it in and we'd turn it into the teacher so that it could be graded since the teachers obviously didn't read braille. Well, sometimes there would be things that we would have to do in class that couldn't be brailled for me in advance. My textbooks weren't braille, but sometimes there'd be worksheets or other things. And sometimes they would be in braille, but sometimes uh, they wouldn't be. And uh, there were instances of, of books where we had to read the book in class and we couldn't get a braille copy for some reason. And so my braille transcriber would sit down at a tape recorder and read the book into the tape recorder and I would listen to it. Uh, I know for sure that I listened to Where the Red Fern Grows that way when I was in seventh grade. Uh, that's one of those books that really stuck with me uh, growing up as well. But the, the first Audible purchases, the Sherlock Holmes novels, it's funny, those were the first purchases, but then I kind of went on a, on a non-fiction binge for a while. And, it was obviously strange for me to go back and look at those and see how much I was actually spending on audiobooks back then. Because early on, uh, I th I tried Audible because I got a card and an MP3 player, and I thought, what the hey, you know, let's give it a try, see what comes out. And early on, after I would got my free book or whatever, I would I would actually pay cash for a lot of books and you know because I couldn't wait to get my next credits or whatever and so I spent a lot of money certainly certainly more than I spend now uh, for books but then audible has sort of changed over the last 11 years as well so my first memorable experience as I said was Disney War by James V. Stewart uh, narrated by Patrick Lawler uh, we might revisit that book on the show someday, kind of look back. Maybe I'll reread it and we'll talk about it again in a book commentary. But, you know, that was really kind of what got me hooked. So that's the question that I'm posing to you. Tell me about listening to an audiobook for the first time. Or if you can't remember that, tell me about the first book you purchased on Audible, if you are a member there or took advantage of a trial offer you heard on a podcast or in some other medium, you can go into your Audible order history and go back to the very beginning and see what that first book was if you need a reminder. Tell me about the first time you heard a great narrator, one that really you became an instant fan of, or you know some first experience, it doesn't even have to be a great one, Maybe your first experience wasn't so great, but you kept going anyway, and you persevered. I have another first experience that I'm going to talk about in another segment here in a little while that actually happened to me this year, uh, the first time that I tried something new that worked out really well for me, and I'm very happy that I did it. So there's always a first. You know, uh, they say you remember your first very well, I remember the first CD I ever bought. It was Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette, and it's still one of my favorites even today. And a large reason why is because it was my first, but also I do like the CD. So, you know, if you remember your first, well, I want to hear about them. Uh, and here's how you can tell me all about those firsts. We have set up an email address t to help you get in touch with the show. That email address is feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. And when you email that address, uh, two people are going to see it. I'm going to see it and Ken is going to see it. And 
And so we would love for you to email us about your first time listening to an audiobook, that first discovery, or how you got into them in the first place, that first audible purchase, that first great listen, whatever it might be. And also you can email feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com if you have any other uh, comments, questions, show ideas. Maybe you have a suggestion for a fan feedback question and you would like me to discuss that and, and turn that into a fan feedback question for the future. And so I plan to share some of these responses maybe in a couple weeks, give you some time to, to think about it. Uh, next week we have plenty to discuss, so we might not get to the feedback right away, but it'll get you some time to get some feedback in if you want it shared on the show. If you just want it shared with me and you don't want me to talk about it on the air, that's fine. Just let me know that. But if you send it without telling me that you want it kept off the air, I may just assume that it's okay to to mention it. Now, I know that people don't always contribute feedback, especially when the show is new. I know that it can be hard to convince people that it's worth their time to participate. I understand all that, and I'm prepared for all that. Fortunately for you, the listener, I have no problem bribing you to get you to participate. So what I've decided that we're going to do, and we promise giveaways on the show, and that's something that we are going to do from time to time, and I figure, why not start off my first show as solo host by announcing a giveaway? So this is what I am going to do. Because June is audiobook month and because it's going to take a while to iron out the kinks of everything, at the end of the month, I am going to hold a drawing. I will use the website random.org to achieve this task, to complete this task, rather. It's not a video game, but I will use random.org to hold the drawing and what we're going to do is I'm going to give away six audible credits because June is the sixth month of the year well that's basically it and because it's talking or it's um it's June is audiobook month we're gonna we're gonna start with a a pretty big giveaway so going to give away six audible credits and these can be used to purchase any book you want there's no book attached to them you just upload them into your account they are there and you can use them Uh, we may depending upon how many entries we get and I'll discuss that in a second uh, we may hold a single drawing for all six or we might have a first place winner get three, second place winner get two, third place winner get one. It'll just depend on how much feedback uh, we get. And I will announce that once I have a sense of how much feedback is coming in, uh, I will announce that on the show so you will know that. Now, how do you enter to win these six Audible credits? Simple. Send email feedback between now and the end of the day on June 30th and your name will automatically go into the drawing for these credits and if you send multiple uh, feedback items answer different fan questions or what have you uh, you can earn extra entries now I will be reading these and I will be determining if someone is trying to game the system by sending feedback emails that can 
contain only one word or something of that nature. You can't do that. It's got to be reasonable and fair, but I will be in charge of that, and um, I'll know who's trying to stack the odds too much in their favor. But if you submit genuine feedback, like an answer to our fan question or a show idea or tell us what you're listening to, any type of feedback it doesn't have to be specific to a episode that you have heard. Uh, you will be entered into the drawing and you can win up to six credits, depending upon if we only get one person sending us a feedback, they're by default going to win all six. But if the field is large, then we might split it up. Uh, it'll just have to be something that, again, I'll figure out. And I'll let you know. I'll, I'll be straight with you in advance. If in a couple of weeks we've got a lot of feedback, I'll say, uh, I'll say, okay, we've gotten a lot of feedback, so maybe we'll divide these up and give three to the first place winner, two to the second, and one to the third. But even one free book credit is better than none, right? So um, again, now don't wait because I know you're thinking, well, if you're going to give away six in June, you might give away seven in July. True, I might give away seven in July. I might also give away none. And there might be a different way to earn fa uh, to earn entries into the drawing next month. Maybe it's leave a great review on iTunes that gets you into the drawing. Uh, you know, the drawings might not be every month, as I said. It'll just depend. We're doing it this month because it's audiobook month and because the show is new and we want to get it off the ground with something. And we want to see if we can get people to talk to us and engage us in conversation. And that seems like a perfectly good way to go about doing it. So again, the email address is feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Um, right now, entries are going to be limited to people that email. We might do a social media thing later where Facebook and Twitter comments can be entered in. But because this is really the first time I'm doing it, I want to sort of keep it simple for myself so that I'm not like, I don't want to miss anybody, you know, and I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody. And so I want to ramp up to including things like Facebook and Twitter. So uh, right now, email submissions will get you into the drawing and we'll work on adding the other stuff to future giveaways. But, you know, we are going to give away credits and other things. You know, we're working on some other stuff. We got irons in the fire. Ken told me the other day that his uh, to-do list for the podcast is at least 312 items long. And I don't know if he's exaggerating or not. Uh, he told me that blocking me on Skype was second on his list. So, you know, things are going well. But uh, again, you know, like I said at the very beginning, you want this to be a user-friendly show. So send us your feedback and your ideas and who knows maybe at the end of the month early next month you'll be getting an email reply from me saying that you've won some audible credits and you can use them however you want and on that note i also just want to say that if you do send feedback to the show there's a good chance that i will uh, respond personally and say hello and thank you for sending us an email and telling us what you want to hear and telling us what you like and what we could do better. I ask that maybe you give us a little bit of a grace period on that because, like I said, uh, the show is going to not really take form for a few more weeks and uh, the format will be settled then. But that's what we're going to do. And now, before we get into the next segment of the show and another way to get the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast involve, we're going to take you to a word from Audible on how you can get a free trial. For you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash talkingaudiobooks. 
Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks for your free audiobook. And now back to your host, Casey Trowbridge. And thanks again to Ken for telling us how you can get a 30-day free trial of Audible. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably out there thinking, this is an audiobooks podcast. We already know about Audible. In fact, we're all members, you know, or we've all tried Audible. This free trial offer doesn't really hold much appeal to us. And that may be true. That may be the case, of course. Who is going to know about Audible better than people that are avid listeners of audiobooks? Avid enough that they're going to listen to a podcast that talks about audiobooks. But I have to tell you, and this is a true story, and he can confirm this if if I ever get him on the show, but a friend of mine the other day on Facebook sent me a message, and he said, you know, I haven't been a subscriber to Audible in 10 years. Uh, what should I do? What do you recommend? Uh, what should I know? Uh, how, what kind of memberships are there? All these different things. And if you listen to Ken and I talk about this subject back in December, um, you will not be surprised to learn that I gave him a lengthy uh, reply that involved a lot of information and suggestions and helpful hints for saving money. And so you never know. Uh, who might be out there, how they might have gotten into this podcast. Maybe they listened to audiobooks for years and years, but always went to the library to check them out. Or maybe they're visually impaired and they have access to the National Library Service Bard uh, uh, website, which is sort of like a library that you can download audiobooks from. And maybe they've never tried Audible. They just never had it within their financial means, but want to give it a try now or would be willing to give it a free trial. That's one reason for why we uh, are still going to plug Audible to a group of people who already know about it because you do never know who might be listening and who might give it a shot. Plus, it helps the show, and this show... Uh, it's a labor of love for me, and it's something that Ken enjoys doing and something that we enjoy doing together. But we also have plans, and we also have ambitions, and we would like to see the show generate uh, revenue and sponsors and things like that. So we have to do right by the ones that we have to sort of help us uh, attract new ones and show that we are semi-professional operation here so again we know commercials can sometimes be a drag but there's not too many of them in this show so we just thank you for being patient and being understanding in that regard now i'm going to talk to you about another feature of the podcast that sort of developed rather quickly um just out of nowhere And it's one that I'm very excited about. It's another thing that I think can promote uh, user interaction and user engagement. And that is the Talking Audiobooks Monthly Book Club. And I'll explain how this is going to work in just a second. But what I will say before that is I'll tell you how it sort of came to pass. Um, In the opening segment of the show, when I was running down my acknowledgments, I thanked a few people, a couple of them being Ewan Taylor and Art Shimko, a couple friends of mine going back more than a decade now. I can't believe it. But uh, I was lying in bed again the other night, and I, I don't know. I don't do much anything else in bed these days, so I might as well be thinking about it, about things. But um, I'm in bed lying there can't remember if I was in silence or not this time, but all of a sudden I had this idea and I thought, you know, you and Art and I, we we talk regularly, but we've always wanted to do another little project together. And so I came up with this idea. What if we all decided that we were going to read a book and 
we would get together at the end of the month and talk about the book that we just read and and record it and upload it to this podcast as an episode. And the more I thought about it, the more I was interested in pursuing this as an idea. And so on Monday of what we're talking about, this would have been the 22nd, I think, of May, uh, I direct messaged them on Twitter and I said, hey guys, uh, this idea, let me run it by you. If you think you can make it work, uh, then we'll we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. I said, let's do a, a monthly book club where we all read the same book and then get together on Skype to talk about it afterwards. And we'll all, of course, I say read the same book, but we're going to listen to the audiobook, of course, because this is talking audiobooks, not talking books, which is also another way of saying audiobooks, but that's for a different day. But the... Um, the idea is we'll listen to a book, take the entire month if we need it, and then we'll record something and um, we'll announce the book in advance so that listeners can join in and follow along and listen and submit their own feedback as well and we'll add that to the discussion. So it didn't take me long to hear back from those two guys and they were on board immediately they liked the idea, they thought we could pull it off, and so I started to make plans to put that into place. Well, after that, I went on my personal Facebook page and I was talking about it, and um, I said, you know, we're thinking of reading a book for the show every month, and then getting a group of people on Skype together to talk about it after the fact, and go over it, and, you know, break it down, and and review it or whatever and lo and behold I got three more people that expressed an interest in participating in this which told me that the uh, idea was at least intriguing and so um, it started out with just me Art and Ewan but if you know these other three people follow through and are really interested uh, then It'll add more voices to the discussion. And I'm not sure we're going to get all six of us on Skype at the same time to discuss the book. It might be uh, broken down into one or two segments where it's me interviewing a couple people here and a couple people in a different segment and splicing it all together and making a show out of it. But when we're done, you'll have a complete uh, group assessment of the book itself and like I said we want listeners to participate and as I mentioned previously as well we're working on implementing some ways that you can send us feedback of course you have the email address already but we're looking at ways where you can send in your audible feedback your your uh, voice feedback in, in the form of an mp3 or perhaps a voicemail that a voicemail number you can call and leave a message to and we can include that as well so uh, our book for this month I'm going to announce now of course as you're hearing this it is June 2nd which means uh, things started yesterday but this is not a terribly long book to finish in a month um, it's a book it's called the yucks and it's Two years in Tampa with the losingest team in NFL history. And it's about the 1976-77 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which uh, entered the league as an expansion team and then uh, proceeded to lose 26 consecutive football games over two years. And uh, this book is described as being a combination of Friday Night Lights and the Bad News Bears. Uh, it's written by Jason Vuick, narrated by Patrick Lawler, and is a production of Tantor Audio. It runs approximately 7 hours and 19 minutes. We're going to have an excerpt here for you to listen to in just a second. Now, how did I choose this for a book to read in a book club? This is interesting or it seems like a strange choice to you that I would pick 
a book like this for a book club, especially since it's not football season. This might make more sense in September. Well, when it was you and Art and I that were going to do it, I thought this would be a safe bet. I thought this would be uh, one that we could all agree on would be fun to start out with because we all like sports generally, football specifically, and epic failure especially. And so it was easy for me to sell it to them. And another thing that appeals to me about this book is it only has nine reviews ratings on Audible. And I kind of wanted to start out with something that maybe wasn't atop the bestseller list. And we'll do those as the months progress. We'll, we'll try to mix in some popular fiction and other genres as well and some stuff that uh, is more mainstream and hits that bestseller list. But I also want to shine a light on things that maybe aren't always noticed you know, this book was released in August of 2016. I believe August 30th was the date that it went up on Audible. And we want to sort of spotlight something that maybe a lot of people somehow missed. Another reason I picked this book was that I thought since uh, Patrick Lawler was the first narrator I heard on Audible, which turned out to be wrong, as I have already said, that it would be a neat bit of symmetry to go back and have him be the first narrator heard in the book club as well. And this was the title that I came up with. And so um, what we're going to do here in just a second is I'm going to throw to an excerpt from the book. And as you listen to it, you can decide if you want to take the chance, take the plunge, join us. Um, maybe you want to wait a month and see how it goes, but maybe you do want to join us and in uh, reading this and following along with the book club and, and uh, you know send feedback after you've after you've finished so we're going to hear an excerpt and then we'll come back and we'll talk about something else uh, we'll get into another new segment of the show but right now let's throw to an excerpt of the yucks by jason Buick. But really, how bad were the bucks? I mean, the Owen 26, 1976-77 bucks, the franchise with the longest losing streak in NFL history. Let's do the math. In 1976, the bucks were outscored 412-125. to 125. That's a per-game equivalent of 29-9. to 9. They were 28th in offense, 27th in defense, and were shut out five times. The team's first touchdown ever was a fumble return in week four. The first passing touchdown was in week six, and even that was a busted running play in which running back Lewis Carter was stopped on the goal line but had the presence of mind to throw. The team's starting quarterback was Steve Spurrier. Yes, that Steve Spurrier, a career backup with the 49ers who had seven touchdowns and 12 interceptions and who was sacked 32 times. Lewis Carter led the team in rushing. He had 521 yards and one touchdown. The Bucks' best receiver, Morris Owens, didn't play for the team until week three. He'd been cut by Miami and picked up on waivers, while the Bucks' two kickers were eight for 18. This was a terrible team, perhaps the worst team in the history of the NFL. In 2009, for example, the Washington Examiner offered this shameful tidbit. On Mount Olympus of futility, the 1976-77 Buccaneers are Zeus. Take the 2008 Lions, the 1974-75 Capitals, and the 1962 Mets and throw them into a bag. Then light it on fire. That's the Bucks. But what did the Bucks think? What did John McKay think? Well, the Southern Cal legend once told the team... If you play the best you can play and they play their absolute worst, 
you'll still get blown off the field. Er, thanks, coach. McKay's most famous quote supposedly came after a reporter asked him, What do you think about your team's execution? To which he replied, I'm in favor of it. The creme de la creme, however, was Bucko Bruce, the team's rakish, sexually indeterminate mascot who looked like a 70s Errol Flynn. Bruce was the brainchild of Tampa Tribune cartoonist Lamar Sparkman, who seems to have felt very passionately that the village people needed a pirate. Bruce is a long-haired, whimsical waif who wears an earring and a floppy hat topped by an ostrich plume. Sort of a Hedda Hopper slash Barbara Stanwyck slash Queen Mum look. Oh, and did I mention he was winking? Well, he was. However, Bucko Bruce was one thing. Losing game after game after game was another. And there you heard an excerpt from The Yucks, and that is our June Talking Audiobooks monthly book club selection for this month. And again, I would like to encourage you all to acquire the book and to follow along with us. For you, the listeners of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash talking audiobooks for your free audiobook. And now back to your host, Casey Trobry. This next segment is called What Caught My Ear? Basically, the premise behind this segment is I'm going to browse the coming soon section or take a look at the just released section of various retailers and I'm going to look for something every week or every week where we don't have something else going on and I'm going to highlight something that caught my attention, something that grabbed me. Now this is not necessarily an endorsement per se because it's going to be something that's either come out just recently or uh, it's about to come out and that will mean that I probably won't have read it and so I'm not going to necessarily endorse a book that I haven't read yet because as anyone who has listened to many books knows or even just has read a lot knows or even you know this is true for movies or what have you Sometimes you anticipate something and then when you get into it, you find out that uh, it didn't quite live up to your expectations. And so this is not an endorsement. This is not a review. I'm just telling you about something that I'm excited about. Uh, These are things that I'm intending to read or intending to listen to. Uh, It might not happen right away, but it's something that If it ends up in this, you can at least be assured that it's on my Audible wish list or wish list on another retailer, and it's going to be purchased at some point with the intention that I will listen to it. Um, You know, we talk a lot about Audible on the show, but as we've said before, this is a show where we're going to cover the industry, and while they are the top provider of audiobooks they are not the only one in fact the title that i am going to feature in this week's what caught my ear is a title that you cannot buy on audible.com it's from a website called graphic audio and it's graphic audio that's all one word no underscores or dashes or anything like that graphicaudio.net now I mentioned earlier that I had experienced a first this year for audiobooks, and graphicaudio.net is it. Um, I was reading some old articles in a publisher's weekly in their in their audiobooks section on their website because I had nothing better to do and 
nothing was really capturing my interest listening wise so I was just going back over the industry over the last few years and reading different articles they had and one of them was on uh, titles being put out by graphic audio and it said that they had done some Marvel titles and I was interested because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Marvel and Marvel superheroes and comic books and stuff but I've kind of always wanted to get into that a little bit and so when I came across this article I was intrigued now these graphic audio productions are multi-cast performances with music and sound effects the whole uh, the whole shebang you know and if you're sitting there thinking well okay that's nice but I'm not really into that uh, graphic or you know comics and that universe at all why would this hold any interest to me and the truth is that this specific title that I'm going to talk about today may not but if you're not familiar with graphic audio they have other things besides uh, Marvel comics that have been adapted into uh, audio and what these are is adaptations of graphic novels I think but what they have besides that and besides they do work for DC as well but besides that they have mysteries they have historical fiction they have science fiction they have sports they have horror you know they have westerns so that's not just they're not just working with comic books here these are full productions of all sorts of different genres there's a series that I want to try called the Galactic Football League which is sort of a science fiction uh, sports hybrid you know um, and graphic audio you can get titles as mp3s m4ps flak downloads or you can buy them on cd and they'll send them to your home and you can listen to them that way and like i said earlier this year was my first experience with uh, a graphic audio title i listened to marvel's civil war and i really enjoyed it it's probably my favorite book that i've listened to this year uh, i even played a little bit of it for a friend of mine on the Apple TV that I have I used airplay and I played a little bit of it and as I did that the screensaver on my Apple TV came up and it was it was New York that was showing on the on the screen it was you know images from New York that were playing as we're listening to this book and he said you know having those images helped sort of enhance what he was hearing helped him sort of get into the story a little bit so um, you know I became I became a fan and I've gotten a few more graphic audio titles since then they have a rewards program where every purchase you make you get a, a certain amount back I think it's six cents on the dollar and you can also earn rewards points by writing reviews or uh, they might have a survey for you to take and you can earn points that way and of course you can use those points to get titles cheaper they have sales all the time kind of like audible they seem to always have some sort of sale going on often it's like a really high threshold like you know 10 downloads and get a nine downloads and get the 10th free or something like that you know but they do have them and we're going to highlight some of those when they come up when we do sales alert episodes which uh, we'll talk about more when the time comes but um, again I wanted to highlight a title that you know you're not necessarily going to find it on audible you're not going to find this one on audible they sort of excel sell exclusively through their own website but you know, they have, that, they have an app for your phone and your tablet and stuff, and you can download the books that way and listen to them. But I, I was really impressed the first time out, and, you know, not all of my uh, books that I've purchased have been as good as that first one. The 
the next couple were a little rough, but I think it was partly because I'm still not familiar with the with the whole genre that I was dealing with and the whole Marvel uh, universe there. I'm still sort of feeling my way through that. But again, these sound amazing with the effects and the music and you're gonna hear an excerpt of uh, this week's uh, title. And next week it might be a title that you can find in a more conventional way on Audible and other retailers. But this week, this week's title is called Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Collect Them All. And it's, like I said, narrated by a full cast. It runs about nine hours. Uh, it was written by Karina Davis. And, um, of course, it was released on the 22nd of May. And Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 hit the movie theaters earlier in May. And so it was nice to have a release timed with that. Now, I should say that this is not a adaptation of the film. Uh, this is a completely different story, as you'll hear in a moment. And if you're thinking, well, well cool, they got the cast from Guardians of the Galaxy to come in and narrate an audiobook. No, that's not what happened either. This is a cast of actors that they ha have hired. Some of them they use quite a bit for, you know, different things. And, and you know, they just happen to be uh, putting this out at at the same time that the movie hit, which makes for great synergy, I think. And um, it's one that I'm excited to listen to. I I listened to there's another Guardians of the Galaxy title on on the website. It's called Rocket Raccoon and Groot to Steal the Galaxy. I listened to that one a couple weeks ago, and it was really funny. It had a lot of great humor. Uh, the, the characters, you know. I, I enjoyed, gotta love Groot, I am Groot, right, you know, and so there's, there's a lot of Groot in this one, apparently there's a lot of Groots in it, um, we'll put the, we'll put the summary into the, uh, show notes, because you don't want me to try to, uh, remember it off the top of my head, and we will, uh, just play an excerpt here in a minute like i said this is something that i intend to listen to hopefully soon in fact i wouldn't be surprised to learn that you were listening to this episode of the talking audiobooks podcast while i was listening to guardians of the galaxy collect them all so what we're going to do right now this is not an excerpt of the book so to speak this is a trailer that the graphic audio people put together that uh to you know to sort of advertise the book there is an excerpt that you can find on their web page we'll link to the book as well check the show notes because a lot of what we talked about today will be referenced in the show notes we'll have a link to the book club book of the month we'll have a link to this what caught my ear title and a few other things that we will um, be mentioning as well but um Right now, I'm going to let you listen to the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy, collect them all, and we'll come back from that, and we will wrap it up for this week. Graphic Audio presents Not so long ago, in a galaxy of indeterminate distance from our own, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, collect them all, by Corinna Davis. Don't you know us? We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Come on! Never! Oh, that hurts. We've saved the universe a few times. Listen, I'm Star-Lord. The Star-Lord, team leader, kind of a big deal. Can you rent motorcycles on Baden? You're kidding. Star-Lord has few self-preservation instincts. This usually does not surprise people. This is Rocket, tactician, technician, Definitely not a genetically modified Earth raccoon. I'm asking you because you're the smartest person on this team with the most tech experience. And? No, that's all the flattery you get. All right, fine, I'll take it. 
one of a kind. Also, I'm not a flarkin' raccoon. You take that back. At the ship, we have Gamora, the deadliest, uh, I mean, uh, greenest woman in the galaxy. Last of the Zen Hobarians. Definitely not a reformed assassin. I am Groot. Groot? What are they saying? Groot asked whether we're all right. The Grootling said it's an insult to ask me that after a lousy two opponents. He's not wrong, but I'll let it slide. And there's Drax, the discourager. Hell of a guy, impressively honorable, definitely not someone who would ever go on a murderous, vengeful rampage through the galaxy. Or have a nickname like Destroyer. It's for sure Discourager. You're the Destroyer, aren't you? Yes. So let us destroy. I am Groot. Uh, ha, <laughs> and then there's Groot. You met Groot when you almost blew him up. He's a living tree. I am Groot. I am Groot. Oh, stop trying to befriend subpar murderous criminals. From the same guys who brought you Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot Steal the Galaxy, and a bunch of super serious superhero audiobooks, for the first time in graphic audio, all of the Guardians in one jaw-dropping adventure, doing what they do best, saving the galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, collect them all. Copyright Marvel. So if you've listened to that excerpt and you thought, well, that was interesting, I'm maybe going to try that. I've never listened to a graphic audio title before. Maybe I'll check that one out. I'd love to know, and if you enjoy it, I'd love to hear from you and, and let me know what you think. If you are a longtime graphic audio listener, uh, let me know how you found them and you know some of the titles that you like. Because, like I said, uh, I've really enjoyed my experience with that website this year, and I want to get more into it, so I would love to hear some recommendations. You can email those to feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. And as an added bonus, uh, because it's feedback that you submit in the month of June, you'll earn yourself an entry into the drawing for some Audible credits uh, that we'll give away after the turn of the month to the month of July. So I think what uh, we're going to do now is wrap up the show for this week. I want to thank you all again for listening. I want to encourage you to follow the show through the TalkingAudiobooks.com website, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TalkingAudiobooks, Twitter, Twitter.com slash TalkingAudio. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Goodreads. Uh, all of those specific URLs followed by slash audiobook Casey. That will get you connected with me. I'd love to have you friend me on Goodreads and you can see what I'm listening to. Hopefully something, because I have to tell you, getting ready for this podcast has been uh, something that's kept me incredibly busy. So I haven't really been listening to a lot of books. You know, it's June now, but May, uh, I started off May strong listening wise, but it sort of tapered off as I got more and more active in this podcast and it's like you know hopefully by the time you've heard this things have picked back up a little bit but um it's just been so so uh, fun and exciting to be working on this project that uh, it's really been hard for me to keep my focus long enough to listen to anything but i will have to get back to listening soon because otherwise We are not going to have a whole lot to talk about on future episodes of this show. And I want there to be many more episodes of the show to come. Like I said, uh, send feedback and be entered into our drawing. Tell us what you'd like to hear on the show. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Uh, If it's something we're doing wrong, it's Ken's fault that it's wrong, not mine. I just want to clarify that. So uh, next week... Uh, We're going to do our recap of the Audio Awards. The 2017 Audio Awards were held June 1st, which if 
you're hearing this on June 2nd obviously means they were held the night before and uh, last year they were streamed and I would assume they are going to be streamed again this year again I'm recording this uh, a few days before you're gonna hear it so uh, I'm, I'm making the assumption that they're going to be streamed by the time you've heard this they will have been or not have been but either way I'll know the winners by the time I record uh, the show you'll hear on the 9th and we'll run down some of the highlights we'll talk a lot about what does it mean to win an Audi really and does it mean anything does it mean anything to you does it mean anything to me that a book was nominated for an Audi that it won one what does what does it mean we'll find out how aware you are of the Audis if you've watched the Audis and and then are listening to this send me your feedback let me know what you thought of the show it's hosted by Paula Poundstone and uh, she also hosted the 2016 version and I'll talk about her performance assuming of course that I get to watch it otherwise I'll just have to make stuff up and I don't want to do that but uh, every plan is to watch if watch if it's available and tell you about it next week it's a little bizarre I'm sorry that I'm phrasing things so weird because I'm talking about something that for me has not happened yet but by the time you listen to it it will take have taken place so I'm talking about something that's for me a future event and for you a past event so I keep changing my tense and it's a little weird but um, again you know that's the the price I pay for having a longer lead time to get these shows recorded hopefully as I get more proficient doing my own editing and things we will get better at uh, getting them out closer to when they air so there's less talk of future past events and again that's something that you know is on our to-do list for for the future along with 311 other items I want to again remind you that on Tuesday you will be seeing a book commentary drop into your feed if you are subscribed to this podcast. If you're not, you can find it at TalkingAudiobooks.com and I will be reviewing a book that I read recently and talking a little bit about it and uh, if it's something you're interested in, you can listen. I will say that the first one was a little rough. there's a lot of mistakes that I made. You know, if I record this show and I screw up a line or flub a line, maybe I can react to it and play off of it. But when I was recording those, I wanted to sort of stay on point to keep them short and to not go off on too many rabbit trails. So when I screwed up, I would have to, you know, basically re record. And I was doing that for quite a while. And so if it sounds a little awkward I apologize but as I get better at it and get used to the format then hopefully things will improve I'm not sure how often I'm going to do those um, especially right now since I haven't been listening to much there's not exactly a lot for me to do unless I go back to something that I've listened to a few months ago but I don't really want to do that because I want to kind of have my opinions be fresh and and, uh, you know, after a couple months, maybe I don't remember things as well and misspeak. So I want to keep them uh, more current than that. But I wanted to start with one that I was comfortable uh, dealing with the subject matter because I was nervous, you know, recording that was li- that was taped before this. So it was literally the first solo thing I taped for the show. So it was uh, something that you know really made me nervous and I wanted to try to get it right and and uh, in effect there was some uncertainty and things like that so uh, I asked for some latitude on that and even if you're not interested in the particular book um, I would encourage you to listen to it anyway just so that you have some idea of what we're gonna be doing in that type of show in that type of episode and maybe you can make suggestions for how to make those better when it comes to dealing with a book that you're actually interested in listening to yourself so that's 
uh, going to come out on the 6th of June, which would be Tuesday. Uh, June is audiobook month, so we'll have lots to talk, to talk about as far as everything going on, as far as giveaways and publicity and things like that on next week's episodic edition of the program. And so until then, all I ask is that you keep listening. Hang on for a special thank you from Casey. I want to take a minute just to thank a few people that have sort of uh, helped me get to this point in the first place. This is one of those things where as I think back on it and I try to uh, assemble the link, the timeline of events that led me to this point, you know, it's kind of like a link in a chain where one thing leads to another leads to another and now I'm here. And, you know, there's been a lot of people that have helped me along the way by encouraging me, teaching me, a little of both, you know, just being there, listening, advising, building me up and all that. And I want to take a minute just to say thank you to some people. Um, first and foremost, my family, both immediate and extended. Um, many members of my family have told me over the years that I should be on the radio or something to where I'm using my voice, I'm communicating, maybe public speaking. And, you know, I never really disagreed when anybody told me that. So um, I owe a lot of this to them and to them being so supportive and kind of telling me that I could do something like this. Uh, As a friend of mine said, this is actually better than the radio because I can do what I want. I can talk about what I want and I don't have a set format and I can change things and I can interview who I want and not interview who I don't want to interview, you know, and it's really the best of both worlds. So my family for being an encouragement to me is the first group of people that I think need to be, need to be acknowledged here. And next I got to shout out a couple friends of mine. Carl Stern of WhenItWasCool.com and Rick Gillespie of CanvasChronicle.com. Years and years ago, they had a podcast called The Rick and Steve Er Carl Show. And this was probably about a decade or so ago, maybe 12 years. And I started listening to that show in Uh, March of 2006 and really back then they weren't even called podcasts yet or that was a term that was sort of just coming into vogue but I started listening to their show and after a while I started emailing them and after they enjoyed a couple emails from me um, they basically asked me to write something every week and So I became a contributor to their podcast and they became fans of mine. They thought I was funny for some reason and they thought that they would like to encourage my writing and my podcasting. They would always say that I should have my own show or my own blog. And eventually uh, I did start my own blog. It was covering combat sports, things like professional wrestling, boxing, mixed martial arts, uh, judo, the Olympics, and all of that fun stuff. And that ran for a couple years, and uh, that was really what first got me interested in writing and blogging in the first place, which led to my attempt to blog and talk about audiobooks on the internet, which is sort of what led me to this point. So I can say that without the encouragement of those two gentlemen, Uh, They are a large part of why I'm here. And so I would ask that you check out their websites, whenitwascool.com and uh, canvaschronicle.com. Especially if you, whenitwascool.com is a sort of a retro website in, in a lot of ways, talking about like 80s pop culture and stuff. There's other things on there as well, but... That's sort of the 
the main thrust of what you're going to get. But those guys were a big help and a big source of encouragement to me. The next group is a group that worked with me on the blogs that I had over the years. Uh, Ewan Taylor, Art Shimko, Alan Lee, Mark Danger, uh, David Wills. Um, again, another bunch of guys that did a lot to encourage me and we had a lot of fun together working together and you know became friends for life despite not having actually ever met in person uh, and most of those guys I met through Rick and Steve so um, you know there's there's a nice little circle that formed and like I said it's one thing leads to another leads to another and of course the last person that I want to take a minute to thank is Ken himself um, I've gotten to know Ken pretty well over the last few months, but we started communicating almost a year ago, and I came to find him to be very uh, accommodating and very nice and very generous and very helpful, and we got to really get to know each other, building up to my first appearance on the show back in December. and. We stayed in touch since then, and so when he came to me, uh, you know, back in April, it was actually it was April 25th. I remember he sent me an email, and he basically outlined all the reasons why he thought I should be the host of the Talking Audiobooks podcast, and he has given me the latitude to do what I want, and you know, he's here to be my producer and you've grown even closer as we've worked together over the last month it's nice to be able to work with someone who you are in sync with i have to this point suggested many ideas and ken has not turned any of them down or said any of them wouldn't work or shouldn't be tried and it's very nice to be working with someone that's willing to give you that creative freedom and someone that you've come to like and respect and so without Ken I obviously wouldn't be here he's the last link in the chain and I'm sure there are others that I've missed but really Ken's the guy who finally passed me the baton and got me to host this show and I may have cracked him upside the head with the baton after he passed it to me but I'm still very thankful for the opportunity and the faith that he has shown me. Talking Audiobooks is a trademark of KenJoy Media, produced by KenJoy Media, copyright 2017, all rights reserved. Your host has been Casey Trowbridge, produced by KenJoy, theme music composed by Christian Anderson, licensed through EpidemicMusic.com. Visit our website at TalkingAudiobooks.com, follow us on Twitter at Talking Audio, follow us on Facebook at Talking Audiobooks, and subscribe to the Talking Audiobooks YouTube channel. Here's a disclaimer. Various sponsors like Audible.com help make this podcast possible. However, they are not responsible for its content, they don't dictate what we talk about or what books we share with you. And therefore, the opinions that you hear on here are unfortunately those of the host and our guests. We'd love to hear from you, so email us at feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. Tell us what audiobooks you're listening to, what you've liked in the past, narrators that you like. Ask us questions, anything. It's for your feedback. Feedback at talkingaudiobooks.com. That's it. See you next time on Talking Audiobooks.